Hey, what's up? It's Matt, and in my previous video, I talked about base number systems, and I said that one of the places you'll see non-10 base number systems is in color identification codes, or hexadecimal color codes. Basically, once I learned how to understand uh, non-base 10 systems and also some simple color theory, I was able to correctly guess what hex codes would represent which colors. I want to explain how I'm able to do this relatively well, and so I'll talk about color theory and then finish it up with applying that color theory to reading these hexadecimal codes. Okay, so when we normally think of color mixing, we think of things like white and red make pink, or green and yellow, no, blue and yellow make green. That is the color mixing we're taught in schools, and it's so incomplete, because not only is that not even entirely correct, but there's another type of color mixing that actually forms the basis of what we just did. I'll get into that in a second, but first let me explain what I'm talking about when I said the type of color mixing we're taught in schools isn't even correct. I had to re-record this part. Anyway, when we're mixing physical colors, or pigments, or hues, we can only see that color because we're shining light onto it, usually white light. Now, white light is a combination of all the colors, so when white light, or every color, is shined onto a specific paint or pigment, that paint absorbs all the colors except the one it reflects back, which is the one we see. So red paint absorbs all the colors except red. This is why the mixing of physical paint is known as subtractive color mixing, because it subtracts most of the color from the original light source. And one thing all this means is that we will get different results if we use light sources that aren't white light. So here we see two rocks, one that absorbs none of the colors, the white rock, and one that absorbs all the colors except red, the red rock. And so when we shine blue or green light onto these rocks, the white one reflects them back because that white rock is going to reflect all of the colors, but the red rock doesn't. It absorbs them and therefore reflects back nothing, or the color black. But when we shine red light on both of them, then the rocks look the same, because red isn't one of the colors that a red rock absorbs. Now, when you mix different colors of paint together, they combine in ways that subtract different wavelengths of light from the white light source. And when you combine all the physical colors, they absorb all the color from light and reflect nothing back, which is why we see black, the absence of light. But now let's talk about why the color mixing that we're taught in schools isn't entirely correct. So what we're taught in school is that the primary colors are red and yellow and blue, and we can combine those to make any other color we want. But based on what we know about scientific color theory, it actually makes more sense to use the primary colors cyan, magenta, and yellow. These are the colors you can actually combine to make all colors in subtractive color mixing, and it's the reason that printers use cyan, magenta, and yellow ink cartridges. And finally, if you notice, we always say that yellow and blue in subtractive color mixing combine to make green, but that's not true, because this is the actual color of green, and these two aren't the same. I also tried to mix cyan, magenta, and yellow paint on my own here, but the colors were too imperfect, and you can tell, because we didn't really get the right colors, and they all combined to make brown, not black. Now, subtractive color mixing, as you might guess, has a polar opposite, additive color mixing. And just as an opposite would have you predict, in additive color mixing, we don't start with white light and remove stuff, we start with nothing, darkness, and add stuff. We add light. We combine different colors and different wavelengths of light to create light from nothing, as opposed to subtractive color mixing where we're taking away light, now we are adding it. This is the system of color combination that hexadecimal color codes and many other computer color uh, pickers use. Let me show you what this looks like. In additive color mixing, there are three primary colors. Blue, which unfortunately looks a little purple in the middle because of the way the camera is recording the light. There's also green. And finally, there is red. Now watch how these colors combine. When we mix red and blue together, we get magenta. You can see the red on the left and the blue on the right and the magenta in the middle, or now all magenta. Now, if we mix green with blue, we get cyan. You can see cyan in the middle, green on the left, blue on the right, and now all cyan. And then finally, if I turn off blue and have just red and green, we see that red and green, when combined, make yellow. Green on the left, red on the right, and now all yellow in the middle. And as we know from the subtractive color mixing, white is the combination of all the colors, all the primary colors. So if we bring these all together, if we bring red and green together, and then add blue, we should get white. Or the off-white that's going to be produced by the imperfection of the colors and the camera's recording of it. These are all the colors together in additive light mixing, and I figured I'd show you this here since my lights weren't totally perfect. 
If these colors and additive mixing sound familiar to you, that's probably because they're perfect inversions of subtractive color mixing. Primary, secondary, and black and white are perfectly inverted. And this is simply because in subtractive we're taking away light, whereas in additive we're adding it. The process just goes in reverse. Okay, there is one last thing we have to talk about before we can apply all of what we've learned to interpreting the hexadecimal code. The flashlights only really had two levels of color. They had zero, off, and full, on. But in reality, with a red, green, blue color slider, you can adjust the level of intensity of the red and green and blue meter and use varying combinations of those to create different colors. Like for example, orange is mostly red and some green. Also, if you want to make something like gray, just put them all at the same value and make it anywhere between nothing and full. Having done all the demonstrations I did, let's get back to this website, what the hex. Let's click on new game and see the color we're given. Basically, the way this works is the first two digits represent red, the next two represent green, and the third two, or the final two, represent blue. Zero, zero is nothing, and FF is full value. So if we thought about this in base 10, one F would be the equivalent of something like 19, whereas F3 would be the equivalent of 93. So let's look at what we have here and break this down. The first digit is 8D. D doesn't really matter too much, but what's important is 8, which means we have a middle amount, a medium amount of red. The next two digits, which represent green, are B0. So B, that's close to middle, but I'd say in between um, full and middle. I'd put it at something like 75% green. So 50% red, 75% green. The last digits here, which represent blue, are 6E. So I'd say that's something like, I guess, 45% uh, blue. So we're dealing with 50 red, 75% green, and 45% blue. So because these colors are all pretty close to each other, it's gonna be a gray, but it's gonna be a greener version of gray. So my guess for this is either this one two from the left or the one two from the right. I think because it's a greener version of gray, I'm gonna go two from the left first. Let's see if we get it. Yeah, all right, cool, that was it. Let's do another one. Okay, so B5 is red, which means, you know, 75% red. 5-6 is green, which means about, I'd say 30% green, and D3 is blue, so I'd say something like 85 blue. Okay, 75 red, 30 green, or 35 green, I forget what I said. 75 red, 30 green, and 85 blue. So it's mostly blue and red, which together make magenta, but it's also got a tiny bit of green in it. So right away, it's either gonna, again, be the one second from the left or second from the right. This one, I think, is second from the right, because the one second from the left looks like pure, full magenta, and we know that we have some green influencing it. So I'm gonna click this one, too, from the right. And there we go! Let's do one more, and then I'll just end the video, because I don't really have a concrete ending planned. I'm just gonna do one now with 48 for fun, and let's see if I can get it. Okay, um, 3D, so I'm gonna say something like 20% red, 4-3, 20% green, 25% green, and A8, so 60% uh, blue. So this is going to be mostly blue, close to black. Um, my guess is this one right here, next, in between the pink and the orange and all that, because it's not full blue and it needs to be a tiny bit lighter. Darn it, okay. But look how close that color was to the color that's up there. We have 3D, 4-3, a8, and they have 3, 4, 5, 0, A1. So I'm still pretty happy with that, um, but I guess let's try to find it. My other guesses would be the one on the bottom right, or maybe the one from the bottom left up a diagonal top right. I'm gonna click on that. Yeah, there we go! All right, cool. This video has been absolutely all over the place, and <laughs> I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I did making it. Now you can uh, explain to people why subtractive color mixing is different from additive mixing, that there's a light source and it's taking away color, whereas in additive you start with nothing and you're adding it. And you can also go to these hex sites and do this. You can understand how these are written, whether it's from 0 to 255, like some traditional color pickers, or 00 to FF. I have nothing else to say. I have nothing. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you later. One last thing, since this video has already been super long, I was kind of shocked and upset by the amount of incorrect 
depictions of subtractive and additive color mixing I found online. Most of them are sort of slightly off-colored versions of the colors, or just totally wrong incorrectly. And the last one actually isn't one I found online, but one that is on an exhibit in the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. So that's upsetting. Anyway, now I'm done for real. I'll see you later.